here in person, but is going to be speaking online. So I hope that he is already connected. Is he already connected? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Mark Williams, who is the manager of uh, the practice manager digital development at the World Bank. And uh, kindly take the floor and go ahead, please, Mr. Mark Williams. Very good. Thank you, Madam Chair. And thank you um, for inviting me to this uh, very interesting and important conference. Um, my name is, as the chair has mentioned, my name is Mark Williams. I lead the uh, research and policy division in the World Bank that focuses on digital development. And we've, across the World Bank, we've been doing quite extensive research into artificial intelligence and how it can be uh, implemented in development, developing countries and what the effects of artificial intelligence are likely to be from both an economic and a social perspective. So I'm going to just share a few slides on research, summarizing research around the economic impacts of artificial intelligence, and then talk a little bit about potential policy implications for developing countries particularly in um, Africa. Now I'm going to share my screen. Let me check uh, that you can all see it. Can, Chair, can you see that? Yes, we can. Okay, very good. So first of all, artificial intelligence. Um, what's going to be the effect of artificial intelligence on economies globally, as well as in developing countries? Well, the first thing, to appreciate is that artificial intelligence can be thought of as a general purpose technology. So it's a technology which is of very wide um, use. It affects, it can be adapted and used in all sorts of different ways and therefore creates a, a platform technology um, which affects a, the whole of uh, the manufacturing economic activity and social activity. And, and as a general purpose technology, we expect it to disrupt broad areas of economies in both high-income countries and, and developing countries. But having said that, the evidence on, on this is still quite limited. Artificial intelligence is still at an early day, uh, stage of rollout, and certainly in developing countries, particularly in Africa, it's, it's had quite limited uptake um, to date. But we can think of the effect of artificial intelligence in three different ways. We can think of its effect on the labor markets, we can think of its effect on firms, and we can think of its effect on trade. And in all these areas, um, AI is going to have both economic and social implications. First of all, let's just think a little bit more about what AI is doing in the economy. And we can think of it as having three different significant effects. The first is the productivity effect. The second is a distributional effect. And then third one, uh, I would call other externalities or other non-economic or effects that are not directly economic. So I'll talk a little bit about each of those three. First one is around productivity. So AI is a technology which um, augments the factors of production. So when AI is introduced into existing capital, um, it improves the productivity of that capital. And similarly, when it's linked with um, labor, it improves the productivity of that labor. And it has an effect of both raising the output of those factors of production, but also creates new opportunities for innovation, new products, new services, and extending of existing products into new areas. So those are the very general productivity effects that, that AI is expected to have. Now on the distribution side, if we think about what the effects of AI are going to be on individuals, Think about labor, which is currently doing jobs which can be replaced by AI technologies. Those tasks and those jobs um, eventually will get replaced by AI, not everywhere, but in many cases they will. Um, but for, for jobs which are not replaceable by AI, it has the potential to raise the productivity of those jobs, so actually increase demand for, for those types of that type of employment. At the firm level, we're expecting AI to um, enhance productivity of firms uh, and also generate a huge amount of value. But the question would be from a social and an economic policy point of view is how is that value distributed? Is it, is it true that 
the originators of AI, which would be mainly in the US, Europe, and, and in China, which can control the patents on it, would they retain much of the value or would that value be distributed uh, more broadly around developing countries? And then finally, what's going to be the pattern of effect of AI on countries? How is it going to change country competitiveness? How is it going to change the terms of trade between developing and, and high income countries? And what are the implications of that at the macro level? And then our final category of, of effect is around what we call other externalities. So issues around privacy, um, ethics, and decision making, policy decision making, which has already been mentioned so far, um, and I'm sure will be explored in a lot more detail in the rest of the colloquium. So the effect on workers, um, we've seen, we can think of AI as an extension of an existing effect, which is the effect of automation and technology, which of course has been um, underway for, for many decades. And what we see is that even in rich countries, AI, well, first of all, automation and robots have been um, replacing jobs at a rapid rate. And AI is an extension of that, and it's gonna have a similar effect, but in new areas of the labor market. And what are those areas of the labor market, which AI, as opposed to robots, are, um, is going to affect? Well, it's most likely to affect better paid, better educated workers, particularly those in the service industry, who are, which up to now, were not, they were not undertaking mechanical tasks, so they were not the threats of being replacement by automation. But AI is, is, is um, uh, capable of replicating many of those tasks and therefore replacing those jobs. So AI is having a display, job displacement effect, and it's also having this product, productivity effect. And it's the balance between these two which determines the aggregate effect, economic effect of AI, but also the distributional effect of it. If we think about business models behind AI technology, first of all, the, the originators of the, of the technology are really con heavily concentrated in, um, in but North America, as I mentioned, Europe and, and China. And, and we, so the, the, uh, the control over the, the underlying technology or the, um, the licensing of that sits with, with, in those regions. But if we think about the value chain, the AI value chain as a whole, that's at the top, at the most upstream point. Actually, there's been multiple different stages in the, in the value chain to, that converts underlying AI um, intellectual property into products which are sold to, to customers or are used in, in government. And it's a pattern of business models development in each of those value chains, which each of those stages of the value chain, which will determine where the value is retained um, uh, as AI develops and propagates through the, through the, um, around the world. Uh, this is still a very open question. The history of related areas of business like digital platforms is one of extreme concentration and where value has been um, retained in, in the originating countries. In this case, again, the US and, and China. So this is something that we as policymakers and researchers, we need to be very conscious of uh, when we think about the potential future distributional effects of, of AI. And then we, we think about what AI is going to happen, what, what the effect of AI is going to be at the aggregate level, particularly through um, considerations of, of trade. What we see is AI is substituting um, We've already seen automation substituting for labor in, in many manufacturing processes. And AI is extending this process and it's also extending it within the manufacturing industry, but also into the service industry. So that's having two effects. Um, one is it, it, it is it changes the balance between the relevance of factors of production between labor and capital. So countries which have built a business, a trade and export industry based around labor at cost arbitrage where they've been able to use um, cheap labor in their country to, for, to export to, to um, high-income countries. Um, as AI further replaces those, those tasks under, currently undertaken by workers, the rationale for outsourcing uh, or um, offshoring production becomes less, and it makes, means companies, organizations in the destination countries are more likely to reshore. The second thing is it's AI is spreading into new areas of the economy. So I mentioned before the service sector. So many developing countries have built um, industries around uh, call centers and business process offshoring. And much of those tasks, and that was again a labor cost arbitrage, most of those tasks are doable by AI. So that has the potential to hit those 
segments of the economy in those developing countries very significantly. So what do we think, given the lack of evidence, what, what are our expectations about the impact of AI in developing countries? Well, we can think about this in the short run, medium term, and in the long run. In the short run, we think the effect is going to be relatively limited because rates of AI adoption are relatively low and we haven't seen um, much impact on the job market as yet. And it takes time for these technologies to feed through into those other macro effects. In the medium term, we would expect to see significant disruption in the labor markets in some countries. And in the long run, potentially AI is cutting off traditional routes for development, uh, economic development for developing countries. So for example, moving from agriculture through to manufacturing through to services, the manufacturing stage of that process may be more difficult for many countries and could lead to premature deindustrialization. So if we think about the policy implications of this for Africa, well, the biggest challenge for Africa in this context is going to be the rapid growth, sustained growth in the working age population that's expected in Africa. And that working age population is going to need jobs. Uh, now, AI is potentially uh, replacing many of those jobs that would have otherwise been, um, could have otherwise absorbed the surplus labor. So this is going to be a big challenge for Africa going forward. Um, an another consideration, which is the, the education and skill levels of the workforce within Africa. Um, one of the features of, of AI as, a, as an extension of technology more generally is you're seeing a bifurcation of the, of the demand for jobs. You're seeing demand for low-skilled jobs and you're seeing demand for high-skilled jobs. And it's the middle level of skills which is being replaced by technology and AI will continue that process. So the result for, for um, developing countries, particularly in Africa, is that it has significant implications for demand for and the need for education and skills within the workforce, something which, is, um, uh, which takes a long time to develop. And then a second application is going to be infrastructure. Um, AI, of course, is, is dependent on digital infrastructure, uh, both the capacity of it and, the, and the, the coverage of it and the usage of it. So again, regions which have got um, limited broadband and cloud and data digital infrastructure are going to be at a disadvantage um, uh, when it comes to adoption of AI. But there are some positive uh, reasons for optimism as well. Um, if we look at uh, historical other ge uh, general purpose technologies, for example, electricity, what we saw is that though there were countries which originated the, the technology in the first place, in the case of electricity, um, Europe and, and the US, the same could be, could be said of the telephone, but they spread, the technology spread extremely quickly. And if you look historically back at those general purpose technologies, actually the users benefited more in the aggregate than the originators. So AI is becoming what we would call productized. So from original um, patents and original tech underlying technology, it's being turned into products and those products are being sold mid, mid supply chain products. And those products are being sold and adopted into developing countries and there you're seeing rapid take up in certain segments of the economy in certain countries. The cloud business model, which of course is, is becoming very important, gives access to storage and processing capacity, even outside countries, um, where, outside the countries where the, where the user is. And that's creating lots of opportunities. And so what we're seeing is the growth of AI based companies within Africa. And that what they're doing is they're, they are adapting underlying AI technology, but for local, um, the local context. And so there are um, reasons to be optimistic about the way AI can be used and create jobs and wealth in developing countries. So what do the policymakers need to focus on? And this is a very broad, high level um, view, but I would just say there are four areas where policymakers need to focus. First of all is on infrastructure. If a country does not have sufficient digital infrastructure, it's going to be completely cut out of the AI value chain, both as a as an as a innovator, but also as a, as a consumer. And what will happen is the effects of AI will happen, but they will happen around that country, uh, which won't be able to take any, get any value out of it. So that's the first point. The second point is around skills. Technology innovation and AI particularly has significant implications for the skill requirements. And this is expensive and it takes a long time to implement. So policymakers, this is becoming an increasing priority for policymakers if they're not to see severe impact on the labor markets of the decades to come. Legal and regulatory issues are key. 
Um, we've heard about these already, and I'm sure there'll be more discussion of it during this conference. But legal and regulatory issues in the way that AI is adopted um, and used, but also as the way that, in, as a way of encouraging AI adoption within um, organisations in in those countries, um, is a, is going to be an important driver of of how AI the, the value generated by AI is distributed. And then finally, innovation. As I mentioned, there are lots of reasons to be optimistic about the way AI can feed into innovation and job and firm creation in developing countries. But this is um, not done in a vacuum, and policymakers need to support that innovation ecosystem if their countries are, are going to reap um, adequate benefits from the technology. Thank you, Madam Chair. Back to you. Thank you so much, uh, 